What is up my homies? Spring is here. You can see all the buds on the trees behind me. That means spawning fish, that means shallow fish, and that means everybody needs a Ned Fresher course. Yes, today we are going to do a, a Ned rig because you know how much I love that thing. We're gonna do a walkthrough on exactly what you need, how to fish it for the spring bass. Hit that like and subscribe button. We're gonna have some, some Ned fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you would call advanced Ned Rig fishing. So real quick to get started, four ways to fish a Ned in spring. Dragging. Uh, I do that mainly like early spring, you know, like gravel bars, um, little flats, ditches and stuff like that. It works really good for fish moving up. And then also during the spawn, dragging can be great. You know, you drag across a gravel bar again, but shallower than that. Skipping. So I love skipping a net. Like you skip it into a tree, especially that power net. Skip it into trees, skip it under a dock, skip it under overhanging trees, whatever kind of shade lines you can find. Noodle dicking, AKA pitching and flipping. Uh, a noodle dicking to me is just kind of flicking that bait out there. You see a stump, you flick your bait just past it and drag it to it. You see uh, a tree fall, you flick it to the edge. You see uh, maybe a hole in the grass, you flick it right in there. That's a sneaky one because a lot of times the holes in the grass are actually bedding fish. So you, you flick it in there. The last one is probably the sneakiest one and it doesn't get enough love. And it's something that I really enjoy doing. It's more of a uh, an early season deal or if you have fish maybe like around kinds of cover and they're using that cover to kind of move up and that's swimming a net basically you treat that net rig just like a kai tech and you kind of slow roll it ever so slowly rakes great around like docks around tree falls i'm um, around brush you know things same places you kind of put a kai tech but the nice part is you can skip it in there and then swim it out so little sneak deal so let's get into which Neds you need for what. Heads. Got a bunch, but really there's only two that I use, and that's Nichols and Gambler. And they, I use them for kind of two completely different things. So let's go through them. You can see I, I stock up. I stay well stocked, because I know it's spring, dude. And I throw them a lot in summer, too. So first things first, the Nichols. There's two different ones that I use. Gonna give my buddy JT a little bit of love here. The first one is the JT Kenny Magnet, and that's that guy right there. You can see immediately that it has a pretty long hook and a pretty stout hook. That's probably like a two-aught or a one-aught hook. A fine yet decent brush guard and yet standard round head in that. So this is the one that I'll use around largemouth, especially like Gunnersville, you know, bigger largemouth if I'm down in Florida and that. Um, dragging though, I'm not gonna put this one into heavy cover. I might drag it around wood. I might pitch it into grass holes, you know, like open water, just kind of flicking it around. Um, you do need to use a little bit bigger bait on there because it is a, a bigger head, um, but stout hook on it, you know, can handle like five, six, seven, I've even caught like nine and 10 pound large math on it, um, can handle some, some pretty big fish. The other one, and this is also a Nichols head, is this guy right here. This is the Clint Davis. Um, you can see immediately the biggest difference is this is a much smaller hook. Now, I'm actually out on Smith Lake right now. This would be a perfect example. I use this one on Smith Lake, uh, spotted bass, smallmouth, or really clear water situations when I'm using downsized baits or tiny stuff, or I'm having trouble hooking the fish. The beauty of that that super small hook right there, that I don't even know what size it is, it's tiny, is it penetrates and you don't miss fish. However, the, the sort of other side of that is it is tiny, so it can bend. It's actually stouter than most small hooks that you find on Ned Rigs. Um, I bent them occasionally, not very often though, um, but I do love it when you're dealing with spotted bass, small mouth, or super finesse situations when you're really struggling to get them to bite, or you're trying to put those super classic tiny Ned baits on there. So that's the Clint Davis. 90% of the time I'm throwing this in an eighth and a 3 16th. This is actually my, my spawning bass killer, dude. Like an eighth ounce up on the bank and the rocks and that for small mouth and spots absolutely kills it. So the other one is the gambler head. Let me dig this one out. I got one that I've like beat the hell out of right here. Um, so 
this one's all beat up, so we're not going to talk about that one. We'll, we'll do a pretty one. So this is the gambler head, and you're going to immediately see that it has a screw lock on it, and the brush guard is much more significant. Has kind of about the same size hook as JT's, about a one odd or a two odd. Um, but that screw lock is absolutely key to the way I present this thing. So this is my heavy cover, um, like I don't know if I can get the fish out of there kind of bait, um, kind of net head. Uh, so if I'm flipping around like these tree falls, you can see some of these trees and stuff behind me. If I'm skipping this bait, it's skipping a net up in there, this is the guide that I'm using. Um, it's got that stouter hook, that brush guard can handle kind of dangling around in trees and that. Um, if I'm skipping around docks that, that have large mouth, um, if I'm in some really heavy grass, if I'm pitching around some of those grass holes and I know there's absolute studs and giants or maybe there's some sticks around, I get out that power Ned. It, it's just kind of my four wheel drive Ned. The other nice part is, especially when it comes to skipping docks, this screw lock on here, one of the biggest sucky parts about a Ned, just to be totally frank, is that you get slippage. No slippage. That's what we're looking for. No slippage. And when you're skipping that dock, you'll skip, 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 and then your bait starts sliding down and it sort of comes un unglued. Even if you're gluing it, it kind of slides off that keeper and you start getting sort of an empty collar on the bait, on the, on the jig. And it's really frustrating and it slows you down. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm all about rhythm. Like I want to get going. I want to, you know, get in a flow, kind of get in the zone. Um, so with this screw lock, you basically avoid all those slippage issues, especially skipping or when you're, you're really kind of like jerking it around, like putting it in heavy cover, ripping it out and that. It's super handy for keeping that, that bait in place, uh, keeping that bait exactly where it needs to be and not always having to reset it or put on a new bait or cut it down. You know, all the headaches that you get with Ned's. When it comes to baits, so we're going to do some summer Ned fishing and I'll go into some different baits that I use. But this time of year for spring, there's really two baits that I use. And I'm going to just get right out ahead of this because if somebody trolls me down in the comments, this is the first thing they're, they're going to say is there's no TRD. And, and no, there's not any TRD. Is Z Man makes some good stuff. I absolutely hate using the the elastic plastics. Um, every once in a while, if I'm in a current situation where I need that bait to stay standing up, or if they if maybe sometimes with bed fish, if I'm looking for something alternative and my, my standard net baits didn't work, I'll go to it. But overall, I don't like working with the elastic stuff because yes, it does float up, but you'd be surprised. There's a lot of plastisol in some of the baits that I'm going to show you, so they actually stand up too. They're hard to, the TRDs are hard to work with on the screw lock on the gambler power net and they're just hard to keep on the keeper you know you can use glue and stuff but I, I hate doing that so this is the way I roll I you guys can be the judge of it I catch some fish I catch a lot of fish on the net actually because I love fishing it and and these baits work for me so the first one is this guy right here it is the gambler power net worm it's pretty long um but that's not a bad thing because I actually usually cut this thing off right about there and I'll chop it on down. Um, this is actually the ghost gill color. Pretty sick, right? It's like clear kind of laminate color. So the tail, as you can see, is kind of a flat tab on one side, but it comes to sort of a, a sickle or a point. And you can see kind of how much it shakes just on my hand. Um, that that tail is absolutely killer. Um, it's about the, the width of a small stick bait. Um, so I'll use this pretty much I'll start off with it like all the time. You know, it skips pretty well. Um, it, it's great for dragging. I can cut it down. Uh, it's just, it's a great all around kind of Ned and that's how I use it. The other one um, that I absolutely love and you guys have seen a lot of this in the videos and in, in days past and that's the Domeki Stinger, uh, AKA the hot dog. So the Stinger is exactly what I said. It's a freaking hot dog, dude. It's a hot dog with a point. So I love these sickle like tail finishes, um, especially in spring, because a lot of times, you know, yeah, you're dragging for pre-spawn fish and that, but a lot of times I'm catching bed fish or staging fish that are, that are real tweaky and I can shake this thing in place and literally just shake slack in my line and that tail just goes and it drives them nuts. Uh, it's 
it's a sneaky kind of deal and and i think less is more like imparting action but keeping that bait in place is huge that's why i love fishing a net and and this tail is absolutely killer um this is the three inch version every once in a while um if i'm on a largemouth lake i'll go up to they make a four inch and the four inch is pretty much like a stick bait um so it's a pretty mondo presentation um but it can be really good especially when you're pitching in those holes for possible spawning fish and that so i've been absolutely loving these daiwa acceler reels i think they're like 89 or something at, at tackle warehouse uh for a, a bar not a bargain but a, a reasonable price point spinning reel they're absolutely awesome the drag is is buttery smooth i used them in florida when we caught those 40 pound bags and it was absolutely awesome my ned setup though is this guy right here it is a K halo ks2 elite this is a 610 medium I, i've talked to you guys about this rod a whole bunch it's a little shorter than what traditionally um, guys fish a net on and i'm not super short i'm not super tall i'm like five eight five nine uh, the reason i like the 610 and it's specifically this rod has a very like kind of fast tip to it but then it's got kind of like a moderate bend as you go through the rod um it's a medium medium action it, it has just the perfect sort of tip dude uh if it wasn't the same tip as this rod has i'd probably be fishing like a seven foot or a seven foot two um what's really nice though with the slightly shorter rod is we talked about skipping a net under docks this rod gives me excellent accuracy and excellent skipping potential because i can make that little kind of that roll cast and pop it under those docks um what's nice too is especially close quarters fishing for kind of flicking noodle dicking as we talked about noodle dicking this bait around noodle dicking and that around into um, trees into holes in the grass makes me super accurate dude um, and it can handle some big fish. I've caught some absolute giants, even around cover on this thing. Um, I have, this is 14 pound braid. I'll go with 14 normally, just as to be standard. If I need to make super long casts, or if I'm skipping and trying to get way back under a dock, I'll go down to 12 pound braid. You'd be really surprised how much of a difference it makes. Um, eight pound fluorocarbon, this is Sunline Sniper. That right there is your Ned Fresher course. I love fishing a Ned. I catch a bunch of fish on a Ned and spring is one of the best times to fish a Ned because it's so versatile. Skip it, swim it, noodle dick it, you know, drag it. Like you can do a lot of different things with it and I love baits like that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you got any questions or anything, drop them down in the comments box. I will put links to everything you need to Ned down in the description box at Tiger Warehouse and Monster Bass. Hit that like and subscribe button for me. I'm going to get bog a pat for you tight lines, homies.